Hey everyone, it's Lizzie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys the last paycheck we received for the month of October and this is going to be this is going to be a good one. So if you guys are interested to see what this budget looks like and how we ended up pivoting this month, then keep on watching. So one of the things that I desire in my channel and you watching these videos is for you to feel motivated, inspired to get on a written budget and really achieve financial freedom. And honestly, financial freedom, it means something completely different for each individual. So for you, example, your financial freedom situation may be that you are working to save for a dream vacation that you and your family would love to go on because you have, haven't gone on vacation in a while, or you may be the one where you're wanting to pay off all of your credit cards debt. You want to annihilate that and you want to get rid of it. Pay off your student loans, become debt free. Or you may be the person that is struggling emotionally and you just want to feel secure. You want that security, meaning you want to grow your emergency fund in case something were to happen like 2020, like what we're facing right now. And so that's what I mean that your financial freedom meaning or definition is something that's completely different than us. So let me just share with you guys what our financial freedom meaning is in this season in our life. And financial freedom for us is to one, no longer take on debt. We do not want that a part of, a part of our lives. We got rid of it. We are 100% debt free. And that is freeing because we now have control over every single dollar that we receive every week or every month. And also what financial freedom means to us is we want to have security. So the same way as the individual that is facing a crisis right now, having a uh, emergency fund and that security will really relieve a lot of the stresses that you may be facing right now. And so that's important to us as well. And also it's to just save for our next home. We have a goal of having at least 20% down uh, saved for a down payment on our next home. And that is what is freeing because we now have control over every dollar. So one thing that I am known for is this bill tracker. And another thing that had occurred this month is something kind of big had happened. And I've been mentioning it here and there throughout the month. And I'm sorry, I haven't been able to share the news with you guys. Um, and you guys are so sweet for sending me messages of your assumptions. I just want to say one thing that it is not what you guys may have mentioned. It's not that we are pregnant. It's not that. But we're still waiting. We're hopeful. But thank you for wishing that and still praying for us for that because that is a desire for both of us. But we will hopefully within this week be sharing what the news is with you guys it's still exciting it's still life-changing but that's why i made it a point to share how we ended up pivoting for this month and how you could possibly do the same thing so with the bill tracker this is what allowed us to be able to pivot and what i mean is we did not plan for a couple of things and we were kind of unsure of our financial situation for october especially the end of october so I had originally had this filled out where it was just the four weeks, the four pay days, because we weren't sure if we were going to receive income the last week of October. But I still made sure that we were covering all of our bases, that we were going to have enough set for all of the bills. So rent was completed by the 23rd. I made sure that we had that highlighted that we were gonna have the entire rent saved on this paycheck because we were unsure of the 31st, um, or excuse me, the 30th pay. So that is something that we had to figure out along the way. And we knew by this day that we were gonna receive a pay, so I had adjusted a couple of these numbers as you see here. So let me zoom you guys in a little bit. The only Three things that we are going to be setting aside from this bill tracker are our electric bill, our car insurance, and then setting money aside for our trainer or my husband's trainer. 
Um, so that is something that we weren't 100% sure in the beginning of the month when I laid this bill tracker out, but when it came to this week, we did know and we made a plan for that. I just wanted to keep that in mind that using the bill tracker, this allows you to make a plan where if you know something is coming up, you might wanna set a little bit more aside for a specific bill. So that's why some of these numbers had changed when the month continued. So we put more money aside for some of these categories here and I paid it earlier because we were not sure that we were gonna have a pay on the 31st. So that's just something that you can keep in mind in case you have to pivot as well. So meaning you are wanting to make adjustments or you will need to make adjustments uh, depending upon what your situation, what is coming up in the upcoming month. So I just wanted to make that a point for you. But now you know what we are paying uh, from this last paycheck. And let me show you what I wrote in on our paycheck budget. Okay, so this is the last paycheck of the month. This is the paycheck budget. And it looks a little bit different than what my usual paycheck budgets are. And that's honestly, it's because we were not sure of our income. And we had an idea that it was gonna be a little bit less than usual just because of the work that we had to do the prior week. So I know that may seem kind of confusing, but when we share the news with you guys, hopefully this week, you'll understand a lot more. You don't wanna miss that. Make sure you're subscribed and notified. That way you won't miss out on that upload. So in my paycheck budget, I start with a beginning balance. The beginning balance, this is the money that we did not spend from the prior week and what was left in our bank account. So I just include it in the total income along with the pay that we did receive. Now, this percentage formula has been super helpful for us, but this is what pivoting means. So I usually, let me actually show you the prior one. This paycheck budget worksheet is automatically set to 70, 20, and 10. 70% for expenses, 20 for goal, and 10 for tithe. But I had just adjusted this, so you see we're setting aside 80% because the income was very little. So I increased that to 80% uh, that, that the goal is to set for expenses. This is all of the things that leave your bank account, your bills, your regular spending, gas, all of that, that's included in the expenses. And then goals, that's essentially what it is. It's for debt, savings, or sinking funds. And then 10%, we always do this. Even when we were in debt, we still gave. We still gave our tithe because going into debt was my choice. Tithing is something that is a belief of ours to always give back, so just so you know. But the tithe number comes from the pay. It does not come from this total income. That's just the disclaimer I would like to mention to you because we've already tithed from the income we received the prior week. So that's why we don't include the total income for the tithe number. The total income we do include for these two numbers, the expenses and the goals. So you just take the income and you multiply it by the percentage. So 0 0.80 and then 0 0.10 gives us that number. So we always reference this bill or the percentage formula when we break down our spending. So here are the expenses that we are looking at and this is from that bill tracker. So we have the electric bill, car insurance, trainer is up here because we are taking cash out for that but we have our variable spending which is the sun pass gas and miscellaneous miscellaneous this is just a number that we keep in our bank account um, it changes i don't have like a specific dollar amount that i keep this amount in my checking account it honestly it depends each week so i just look over our finances and we make a decision of hey we're comfortable with keeping this amount but just so you know, we always have funds in our bank account. It never is at zero. So I know for those of you who are a little bit nervous with wiping out your account, we always keep a balance because the money that we set aside is for upcoming bills. So just FYI. So the total number for the expenses is 241.11. This leaves us with a remaining of 352.25 that we still have to break up. We still have to find a place for that funds and that is what financial freedom is you are in control of your finances no one else is in control of that except for you now if you are in debt and deep in debt then 
you're a slave to that and you are forced to, you know, pay that back because you borrowed from it. So that's why I love uh, this financial freedom strategy. So these are the cash envelopes that I pulled funds out for and it's our eating out groceries, pet and spending. And then I also included a trainer category here that we do pull out cash because we pay our trainer in cash. I always say R, but it's my husband's trainer. It's not my, he's not my trainer. He's my husband's. <laughs> so let me just get that clear. I don't know why I keep saying that. Anyways, so we are taking out $270 for our cash envelopes and that leaves us to be within that goal amount. We're actually under. So um, let's see exactly where we are. So we said 520 is the number for our goal for any of our spending. Oops, sorry. So right now we're at 241.11 for this expenses over here. And then we said that there was 270 for this. So plus 270. 511.11 11 is the total of both of these categories, the expenses and the cash envelope. So we are under that goal amount of 520 for the expenses. Now we're moving on to the next piece, which is the sinking funds. And so since our income is kind of different this pay, we are just focusing on the two most important categories for us at this time. One of them is our medical and the other one is vacation because we have something coming up. And so we just wanna apply a little bit for that specific sinking fund and our sinking funds is on an online bank account and we kind of have it set up almost like digital cash envelopes where I'm able to monitor what goes into that account that particular account and I actually use an app it's called simple budget so this is the app that I do use it's called simple budget envelopes it's on uh, it's available on Apple devices I'm not sure um, if it is available on Android devices, but I know I've gotten some recommendations for Android users. So if you know, if you're an Android user and you have used an app that is like digital cash envelopes where you can track it, let us know in the comments section down below for our fellow Android users that want to go digital. So this is the cash envelopes that we are stuffing today and the sinking funds. And we also want to contribute to our savings goals, which is emergency and home. So emergency, we're only putting a little bit. We do have a fully funded emergency fund of about four months right now. The goal is to have six months worth of savings, of uh, worth of expenses saved. So we're just slowly building that up because we feel comfortable with the four month. Um, but we just want to have a little bit more security on that. And then also we are adding to our home savings. Total savings that we've applied for sinking funds is $82.25. And that is good for us because we did very well the last few paychecks. So that's just something to keep in mind. Everyone's budget is a little bit different based on your pay schedule. So never feel like you have to live up to someone else's budget system because budgeting is personal, it's individual, and it's all based on what your goals are in life. So I had actually already stuffed these, but I did not pull funds from the cash envelopes for what was left over the prior week. So we are gonna go ahead and pull that fund so that way we can add it to our savings account and we did actually we did really well so eating out we never pull uh funds from here because we eat out a lot it's i it's not a good thing <laughs> honestly it's it's a terrible thing that we eat out, eat out so much however if we have the budget for it we're just going to keep rolling it over because we enjoy that that's a treat for us and yeah we have to work on you know, we have to work on an eating out game, but if we have the funds, then we will just use it. So we did go out yesterday. So I'm filming this the 31st. So yesterday when we got paid, we did go out, we had pizza. That's a give. like we love pizza. We're from New York. It's a thing. All my New Yorkers, you know, New York style pizza is the way to go. And we found a place in Florida and it's the bomb. So we spent $31 in here. And so we still have $10 
left, um, we had $1 from the prior week and we added the 40. So we had the $41 and then we tipped and everything. So that's the remaining for that. Groceries, we had $51 left. So this is where we did not pull those funds. So I actually have to take out the 51. And this is what we are going to apply to our savings account because we did not spend it. And honestly, we do not need $126 for groceries this week. We always are within that $75 range. So I'm going to take this and I'm gonna say we're gonna save it, the $51. And then that leaves us with the 75 that we stuck. So the 50, 60, 70, one, two, three, four, and five, which is great for us. We are fine with that. So I'm so excited that we didn't overspend and we get to save this. So I'm gonna set that aside. Home, we hadn't stuffed the home envelope last pay um, and we didn't stuff it this pay because we do still have a balance of $19 and we actually have to buy some home products. So I'm not going to pull anything from here. Our pet envelope, we have a vet appointment that is coming up. It was actually scheduled for today, but we had to reschedule it. So I'm still gonna keep this in here um, and stuff this for next pay um, for the vet appointment. So we have $122 in here. We have the 50, 70, 90, one, 20, one and two. So yeah, this, this we're just going to keep aside. And here is my spending envelope. We ended up going to Publix and I got my nails. So guys, um, these are not like a manicure or anything. These are press on nails and I am obsessed. I tried them out at Walgreens. I got this brand, oh gosh, I don't even remember. But they lasted for me for like over a week and I was so impressed. Like I had to peel them out and they could have lasted so much longer but I just wanted a change. So yeah, I got my nails and we also got a couple other things. So I also got a gift card of $10 it brought my spending to $42 and we spent $17 at Publix. So now I have $25 left in this envelope for my spending. And my husband, he had 30 and I just gave him the cash for it because he doesn't use cash envelopes like I do. So yeah, and what I love to do is just bring this teller slip to the teller and they give me the exact denominations that I need. It makes it so much easier when going to the bank. So guys, that is everything for this paycheck budget. I hope you feel inspired to get on a written budget and really aim to become financially free. And let me know what financially free means to you. And that way we can all inspire each other to focus on our finances and live a life that we love on a budget. And it really doesn't have to be complicated or anything. It just has to make sense to you and your family. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in a brand new video. Bye guys.